Hi everybody, welcome to Day 7, Section 7.5, Operations with Radical Expressions. Today we are going to focus on simplifying radical expressions, multiplying and dividing radical expressions. All right. So some of, the, some of this is review um, from yesterday, and then some of it is new when we talk about dividing. All right, so as we begin, uh, let's just quickly review the first couple of examples here. So I want you to perform the indicated operation looking at part A, x times the quantity 2x minus 5. So if we quickly do this, we should get a quick answer of 2x squared minus 5x. All right, and we cannot combine these, so this is our final answer. Okay. Moving on to part B, multiplying the two binomials. Let's just go ahead and multiply these, see what you get. You better get three terms cleaning up everything. We should get 3x squared minus x minus 2. All right. Some of you guys like to do the box method, and you can certainly do that. Um, but again, this is a quick review, so I'm not going to spend much time going over it. If you have questions, make sure you ask your teacher tomorrow. All right, so now we are going to continue with multiplying radicals and remember what we talked about yesterday. All right, so the first thing we need to do in multiplying radicals is remember we multiply the coefficient times the coefficients and then the radica radicands times the radicands. So if we're looking at this first example here, all right, where we've got 3 root 2 times 5 root 6, the first thing we're going to do is multiply the coefficients, so 3 times 5. And then the second thing we're going to do is multiply the radicands, and those stay underneath the radicals, so 2 times 6. And we can do this all in one step. We get 15 times the square root of 12. All right. The only thing we have to do then is make sure that our radical is completely simplified. Well, the square root of 12 does simplify further. All right. So the square root of 12, we're going to get 15 times 2 square root of 3. All right. So the square root of 12 simplifies, and now we just multiply these coefficients, 15 times 2, for our final answer of 13 root 3. And there we have it. Okay? So moving on to example B over here on the right, we are going to now distribute the square root of 5 to both of the terms inside of that binomial. And here we go. All right? Remembering coefficient times coefficient, radical times radical. So when we distribute the root 5, there is a coefficient of 1, okay? So we have 1 root 5 times 4, which gives us 4 times the square root of 5, minus 1 times 2 is just going to be 2, and then root 5 times root 7 is the square root of 35, all right? The last thing we have to do is just double check. Is the square root of 5 completely simplified? Yes, it is. Is the square root of 35 completely simplified? Yes, it is. So our final answer is what we initially got, 4 root 5 minus 2 root 35. Okay? All right, then moving on to the last example in this section of multiplying radicals. Now we've got a binomial times a binomial. Okay? So... Again, we are going to distribute and clean up any radicals that we have. Coefficient times coefficient, radicand times radicand. Now, some of you guys like the box method, so we can certainly go ahead and set that up. So we've got a 3 root 3 and a root 6. And then we've got a 2 root 6 and a negative 3 root 2. So when we multiply these together, we've got the 2 times the 3, which is going to give us our 6. And then we've got root 6 times root 3, which will give us the square root of 18. 
2 root 6 times root 6 is 2 times the square root of 36. Negative 3 root 2 times 3 root 3. Well, negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Root 2 times root 3 is root 6. And then finally, negative 3 root 2 times root 6 is going to be negative 3. And then root 2 times root 6 is root 12. Okay. Now, if we go about it here, we can go ahead and certainly simplify our radicals, or let's just go ahead and write it, and then we'll simplify after that. So we've got a 6 times the square root of 18 plus a 2 times the square root of 36 minus 9 square root of 6 minus 3 square root of 12, okay? And now we have to go through simplifying all the radicals that we can. So the square root of 18, that's going to simplify. So we'll have 6 times the square root of 18 is the square root of 9 times the square root of 2, so times 3 root 2, all right, plus 2 times, well, the square Okay, so you get 2 times 6 minus 9 root 6 minus 3 times 2 root 3. Times 3 is 18 root 2. 2 times 6 is 12 minus that 9 root 6 minus 3 times 2 is 6 root 3. Can we combine any of these terms? Do we have like terms where the radicals have the same index and the same radicand? No, we've got a root 2, a root 6, and a root 3. So this is the best our answer gets right here. Okay? All right, finally, we're going to get into a newer topic that you could very well have dealt with in the past in geometry. Now we're going to be dividing radicals. All right, which means we're going to be rationalizing the denominator. We should have heard of this term before. If not, it simply means get rid of any radicals that are in our denominator. Okay, so if we take a look at 10 divided by the square root of 5x, all right, the goal is to get rid of the square root of 5x by multiplying it by something so that the radical essentially goes away. So what I want to do is, let's kind of zoom in here. All right. What we want to do is multiply the numerator and denominator by something that will give me a perfect power underneath, or sorry, a perfect square underneath that radical. Okay, so it's gotta be the square root of something, okay? So 5 times what is going to give us a perfect square? Well, if we do 5 times 5, that will give us 25. 25 is a perfect square. We can take the square root of that. Okay. And then x times what is going to give us a perfect square? Well, x times x gives us a perfect square. So let's just see what this looks like. Now we're going to multiply straight across. Okay. So when we do that, our numerator stays 10 times the square root of 5x. Our denominator becomes the square root of 5 times 5 is 25. x times x is x squared. Okay. Hopefully if we did this right, the denominator simplifies nicely, leaving us with no radical. All right. Well, if we take a look, the square root of 25... Well, let's go ahead and rewrite our numerator before we talk about that denominator. So we've got 10 times the square root of 5x all over. Okay, square root of 25 is 5. The square root of x squared is simply x. Okay, so it simplifies nicely. The radical goes away because those values that are underneath the radical are perfect squares. Okay, and now last thing we need to do is see if we can simplify any further. And in this case, we can. 10 divided by 5 simplifies. 
So our final answer here is going to be, uh, let's see, they both have a 5 in common, so 2 times the square root of 5x all over x, because 10 divided by 5 is 2. So our final answer is 2 times the square root of 5x all over x. All right? The next thing now is similar, just a little different. And if you take a look this time, we notice that example B is almost identical to example A. The only difference is now we've got an index of 3. Okay? So now when we're thinking of rationalizing the denominator, we want to multiply by the cubed root of something because my index must match, all right? And I need to say, okay, 5 times what now gives me a perfect cube? So my index tells me what perfect power I need, okay? In example A, our index, it's not written in, it's a 2. So we needed a perfect square underneath the radical. In example B, our index is a 3, so we need a perfect cube underneath the radical, okay? So a little side note that we can say to ourselves is 5 times what, and I'll call it y, is going to get us a perfect cube. Well, what is 5 cubed? 5 cubed is 125, okay? So 5 times what gives us 125, and that's going to be 25, all right? So I know underneath my radical, I need a 25, all right? And then we can do the same thing for x or any variable that we come across. I need x to be cubed, all right, in order for it to simplify with that cubed root. So x times what? gives us x cubed, and we should realize that it's going to be x squared this time. Okay? So now when we clean everything up, multiplying straight across in our numerator, we get 10 times the cubed root of 25 x squared all over the cubed root of 5 times 25 is 125, x times x squared is x cubed. So now let's go ahead and simplify that denominator. So the numerator stays 10 times the cubed root of 25 x squared, the denominator. The cubed root of 125 is 5, the cubed root of x cubed is x. Okay, and the last thing we need to do is see if we can simplify these coefficients and that denominator any further. And you should recognize that we can, very similarly to what we did in example A. So 10 divided by 5, it's going to go to 2 times the cubed root of 25x squared all over x. Okay. So examples A and B are very similar, and we did that on purpose. You can see the difference when your index changes and how you have to rationalize in that sense, okay? All right. Now, the last example is a little bit different. Uh, it's not quite like the rest. This is where we are adding and subtracting two values together in the denominator, one or both of those values of those terms happen to be a radical, okay? So a rule of thumb here, when we are adding or subtracting two or more terms that deal with radicals in the denominator is we are going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by what is called the conjugate of 
of the denominator. So what does this mean? Well, if I have a plus the square root of b, all right, its conjugate is simply the opposite sign, a minus the square root of b. So all we are doing here is changing these signs. Those signs are going to be opposites, okay? So if we take a look at example c, what would the conjugate of the denominator be? It would simply be changing that sign to a plus. So we are going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2 plus the square root of 5 over 2 plus the square root of 5. Okay, now I like to use parentheses around everything just to remind myself that, hey, we have to distribute, all right? Um, and if we can recognize this, if we multiply these out, these actually become factors of a difference of two squares, all right? So that's just a little fun fact. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get to distributing. Our numerator, 10 times 2, will give us 20. 10 times root 5 is 10 root 5. Divided by, we've got 2 times 2, so we get 4. We've got 2 times root 5, so that's going to be a plus 2 root 5. We've got a negative root 5 times 2, so that's going to be minus 2 root 5. And then we've got a negative root 5 times a positive root 5. So a negative times a positive is a negative. Root 5 times root 5 is root 25. Okay? And now if we did this correctly, if we multiplied by the correct value, we multiplied by our conjugate, these radicals should go away. And what we should notice about this term here is that 25 is a perfect square, so that radical is going to go away. So when we clean everything up, our numerator stays 20 plus 10 root 5. We can't combine these any. Our denominator, we have 4 minus, and the square root of 25 is just 5. So our ultimate answer is 20 plus 10 times the square root of 5 all over 4 minus 5 is negative 1. So that's one way we could write it, or you might see it simply as changing the signs in our numerator, and we get negative 20 minus 10 root 5. Either one of these is acceptable, okay, and they represent our final answer. All right, so if you have any questions on these topics that we were covering today, Bring those questions to class tomorrow, and we will go from there. All right? Have a nice night, guys. Bye.